All right. Good morning. You know, um, life has a lot of different things that come at us and that we face every day. And uh, the other day at work, I had uh, I'd forgot something. But then I remembered other things, other things, and I said, "Oh, thank you, Lord. I'll be happy with the state and such that I'm in, because it could get a lot worse, and it probably will. And <laughs> we forget more, and we don't do quite as well, or maybe not quite as active. So always be thankful for the day you have today, because uh, um, it may not be always as good as you think you. Uh, it, may, it may have it bad, but it it could get worse. Okay, and there is a promise of a better day." Well, that being said, it made me think that how many of you have homeowner's insurance? Everybody got homeowner's insurance? And your homeowner's insurance, does it just pay to cover what you owe and you don't have enough money left to build back a house? Or does it pay enough to build you a new house when that one gets destroyed? And we plan on that. That's something that's important to us. We want to we want to be able to replace, not skimp by uh, car insurance. You can buy car insurance, and you bought this brand new car, and you got insurance, and you're driving down the road, and bam, somebody smacks the side of your car. Well, it paid off your car. That's wonderful. Paid your medical bills. But you ain't got no money to buy no car now. That's not good. There's a thing called replacement insurance. And it's people like to have that. I, I don't want them just to pay off my car because I invested that. I would like it to pay for another one. Especially if you just got it paid off and somebody did that and they give you a little bit of money, but you can't replace that car because inflation's been so bad. And this is what happens. And then also uh, working where I do, people buy appliances. And there's... A one-year warranty on everything. But after the one-year warranty, it's gone. But when you buy the appliance, you're told you can buy a five-year warranty and an additional fee. And invariably, two or three years down the road, when something happens and it breaks, I get a phone call and they say, was it under warranty? I don't know. Let me see. No, you didn't buy the extended warranty. You mean I got to pay? Well, we're not going to pay for it. And, and, and that, that scenario happens, okay? And what I'm trying to get you in the mindset of where God has led me on today's message, which happens to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. There. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's try this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up and not rather mourned that you hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily I have... Verily as I, verily, that's not where I want to be. Sorry, y'all. I'll go to 2 Corinthians. I apologize. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. I'll get you where I want to, where God led me eventually. <laughs> You do a lot of studying and you mark a lot of things and you write down things and they don't always. And there again, I'm thankful that I can write. <laughs> Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace was which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I am labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. 
Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. My Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we thank you for the grace that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for your mercies and your kindness. We thank you for each one here, and we thank you for your word. Lord, we just ask that you take charge of this message. Help me as your messenger. Lord, that the hearts are prepared to be receptive to hear your word. Lord, that they might recognize who you are and what you mean to them, whether they're aware or not. Lord, just watch over us now and be with us in this message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> God, by the grace of God, we are what we are. And we come to be who we can become. You don't get there on your own. You don't get there by your good merits of good works. You don't get there any other way. It's through God's grace, and God's grace comes to you through Christ Jesus dying on the cross, being resurrected from the dead, and he, dispo he disperses his mercy and grace to us. You say, what's the big deal of that? Well, remember I was talking about warranty? God has a plan that's better than a warranty, okay? It's called salvation. Salvation is that removes your sin debt, removes sickness and health, bad health, it gives you a new body. God, when he replaces your body, when this body dies, you get a new one. And we go to heaven, you get a new body, you get a new home, you get everything, and it isn't just as good, but it's excellent. It is perfect. And people say, well, that doesn't mean too much to me. And you know what? That's what the extended warranty people, people say when they buy an extended warranty. or the warrant. When they're buying it, the warranty is wonderful. When the problem arises, it's awful because the warranty didn't cover that. Well, what I see in society is there's a problem and it's sin. And sin brings a lot of consequences in lives. Uh, if you if your sins are not covered you face a penalty of eternal damnation and when you die you don't get no new glorified body you don't get you get a new home but it's going to be on fire and you can call the fire department but it won't put it out because the rich man when he died and he went to hell he said I, I wish I just had a drop of water on my tongue to quench this fire and there's no quenching the fire and the separation from God and you get that brings about because of sin you say well everybody sins yes everybody sins and the Bible teaches because of sin everybody dies the wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life through Christ Jesus so we can be delivered from the penalty of sin by and large for many things <clears throat> Sin not only brings death, sin brings emptiness. And that's why you'll see in a nature of a lost person, they're grasping for something new all the time. Nothing's ever good enough. They're never satisfied. It's a symptom of being a sinner. It's a symptom of sin and it makes you want more and more and more and more and complain because you can't get it. And when you get it, you still complain. It's sin. That's what sin does, part of it. So it leaves you empty. It leaves you with an emptiness. Sin also makes you hopeless. There is no hope in sin. Sin brings death, separation from God, and all sorts of other things. And if you knew you had the if you're buying a vehicle and you knew you were going to have a problem, you would want it covered, right? If it was a manufactured defect, you want it covered. So they have a recall and you take it back in and they fix it. Well, mankind has a manufactured defect. It's called sin. And God calls you to come back to, the, to him. 
He calls you to repentance. He calls you to make a change in your life. To surrender to Him. But just like the manufacturer defect, you've got to take it to the manufacturer. God's calling all to come back to fix that defect. To make it better. Not everybody chooses to do that. They, they choose to do other things. And that's your choice. But you know, everybody I know when they say, when I find that they're, and this is just a, about money. If their car isn't warrantied, if their range isn't warrantied, and then if it ain't, do you know when they want it fixed? As soon as it's broke. Yesterday, please. Sin has broken your life. You're broke with sin. And most people don't care. Doesn't make sense to me. Because when it's broke, I want it fixed or replaced. Maybe they don't know they're broke. I think they don't realize what sin is. And if you don't know it's broke, you don't fix it. Oh, I didn't know that was broke. I know it's broke, so I'll fix it. Sin makes you broken. Sin separates you from God. Sin places you in the jeopardy of uh, eternal damnation. Sin places you in the penalty of death. Sin places you in a, a debt that you can't pay. There's nothing you can do to pay that sin debt. But you're guilty and you owe it. It's broken and you need, you need mending. The only way to mend it and the only way to fix it is by Christ Jesus. To invite Him in to be your Savior. And in John 3.16, and I want you to go read it, you know it. But in John 3.16, and I want to remind you of it because this is what fixes the damage of sin. This is what corrects the brokenness in your life. This is what corrects the emptiness that's there. This is what helps the hopelessness this is the only fix. It's found in John 3.16. He says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And that's a scripture we know. But folks, you're broken with sin in your life and if you've not accepted Jesus Christ, you're not covered. You're not even being worked on. But God is calling you to be worked on. You have no hope because you're condemned already because of your brokenness and sin. And Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. How are you going to fix that? What do you got to fix it with? You say, well, everybody dies. Yeah, once. But not everybody faces a second death, and that's judgment, eternal damnation, and separation from God. God says, if you're His, yea, though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, He is with you. When you pass from this life to eternal life, you want God with you, or you want to go through it alone? And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 again, Verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Folks, don't believe in vain. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Believe what God promises you. Believe that God feels the emptiness, and he does. 
He gives you hope when there is no hope. He says, For I delivered you first of all that which I was also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Sin, that, that sin and brokenness, that problem that you have in your life, that I have, is only th cured through Jesus Christ and His shed blood. And he says that he, in verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas and then the twelve. You're not serving a dead Savior. You're, you're serving a risen Savior. You're not serving a Savior that doesn't have power over death. You're serving the only one that has power over death. Then the scripture also tells us death can be swallowed up in victory. Because when this old body goes away, God's promised me a new one. I have full replacement. I have new replacement. I have better than new coming back to be received. But if you don't have Jesus Christ and something happens in your life, whatever it is, without him, you are not covered. But you're standing in judgment, damnation, without hope, without a way to be fixed. And you're going to remain that way through eternity without Jesus Christ. You see, sin makes you worthless. Sin makes you feel worthless. Sin causes you to have the loss of presence of God in your life. And therefore, without the presence of God in your life, you're empty and you think you're smart and you don't have a clue how the day's going to end when you start. And I don't either, but I have the presence of God to guide me. Sin leads you to captivity. You become enslaved to sin. Because at some point in life, because of your sin, you'll be enslaved and drawn into it in such a way that you're serving sin. And you don't know how to get out. We're all enslaved to sin until Christ comes into our hearts. And then we're freed. Sing a song, he sets me, he set me free. Amazing grace, and it's because of the grace of God, not because of your goodness or anything, but because of what Christ did on the cross and you believed in him. So well, we're all saved. I know that, preacher. Do we really know that? Are you doubting why your life is like it is, or you doubt what's going on, or why God's doing this, or why God's doing that? You see, you have doubts of unbelief and you begin to feel worthless and you begin to feel captive and you and sin does lead to death and it leads to damnation and it brings curses and disease and pestilence. But Christ brings the cure. Christ brings the answer. Christ is the fixer. You know, we all like to fix something, and I, there's things I would like to fix. But I'm not able because I don't know how. But I'm going to share this with you, and I know how to do this. I know how for you to fix the sin debt in your life. It's Jesus Christ. I know how to become worth <clears throat> something, except Christ as your Lord and Savior. then you know your father owns it all. And then you have an inheritance, and that inheritance he offers to all. Whosoever, let him be your Lord. Let him take care of it. He's the only one that can fix your sin. He's the only one that has a way to pay that debt. He's the only way to enter the kingdom of God. He's the only one that offers the plan of eternal replacement. 
He's the only one that has an answer for a new body. He's the only one that has the power over death. That's Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 6. And you hath he quickened who were dead in the trespasses and sin, wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we are we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. It's your nature to be a sinner. It's in your nature to be in the wrath and fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's your nature. But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love, wherewith He loved us, even even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And hath raised us up together and to be made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Folks, I'm not making this up about God being a warranty. I read to you from God's word where he's promising you a new home where we are under the curse of sin, where we have a sin debt, where we were made dead unto, unto sin, but now we're alive unto Christ for all those that accept Him. And you know, I know I have sin, Lord, but I got an inheritance because you're my Father now. I accepted you as my Savior. And I had a conversation one, one evening this week and to kind of give you a little story about how it works with God. There was a man and a woman, and she got pregnant. They had the baby. The man didn't want anything to do with the baby. And that's fine. So the man went on, and he's on older in his life, and he is, he's got quite a lot. Well, the woman went on and married somebody else, and his fa the man she married adopted the son. <coughs> And when she adopted him, and when he adopted the son, he's no longer entitled to his original father's inheritance. Although his father had much worldly things, but he's no longer entitled to that inheritance. Even though Satan may be the power and the ruler of this world, when we are adopted, becoming adopted children of Jesus Christ, we're no longer entitled to what Satan has to offer, but we're entitled to what our Father has to offer, and He owns it all. You see, you may think you're worthless, but you're not to Jesus. He thought you were worth dying for. He loved you. And that's His grace and His mercy. And in your mind, you can think that. But in Christ's mind, He loves you. He wants you to be His. He wants you to let Him be your Father. Will you let Christ adopt you today? Will you let Christ give you hope? Will you let Christ heal your brokenness? Will you let Christ take care of your disease? Will you let Christ take care of all that He's promised you? You see, I get amazed that people get upset over little stuff like worldly things. A well pump being broke, water heater being out, air conditioner doesn't work. And yet they're so broken that if, Christ, that if they died today, they'd spend eternity with in hell. And they don't even care. But I'm a thinking it's like the water heater or the electricity or the air conditioner. You take it all for granted until it's gone. And then you say, I wished I had. Don't let your eternity be in a position where you say, I wished I had accepted Jesus Christ. Make it a decision firm based on the word of God. Be assured as horrible as life can be, just know that like, Jesus has got it all for you and me. 
You see, that's worth a lot. Because with Jesus, you can have peace. He can be broken, but he can heal you. This body can be dying, but he can give you a new one. Your heart can be broken, but he can overjoy it. You can be empty and he can fill it. That's who Jesus is. And that's what he wants to do for all of us. Don't wait till it's too late. Let him give you the grace and mercy now, today, while it's today. Tyler, would you come, please? As Tyler comes, I'm going to ask that you stand. And you know, whether you're lost or you're saved, you need to know what Jesus is doing and done for you. It's important that you know that he's raised us up together and he's made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, which is when he wrote this, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. He's wanting to show you those riches and mercies and grace and kindness. And the only way you get it is for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Uh, Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling calling y'all for being here today i pray that god bless you hope he fills you and if you're hungry we'll have a meal here i think more than enough and just pray that you enjoy the fellowship invite those that can come bring somebody with you next time you come if you can if you can get them to come with you be glad to have them glad to have wes and your wife with us today and hope you enjoy our fellowship um David, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer and bless our meal? Grace Heavenly Father, just thank you once again for this day. Every day that you give us, Grace Heavenly Father, and the freedom that you allow us to have to come to your house, hold you for you, Grace Heavenly Father. Just thank you for this message, Grace Heavenly Father, and just pray that you touch your heart, Grace Heavenly Father. And for someone here that does not know you, Grace Heavenly Father, I just pray that they accept you as Lord and Savior, Grace Heavenly Father. Just be with those that's on a prayer list, Grace Heavenly Father. Just be with them and lift them up, Christian and Father. And just be this with well this week, Christian and Father. I just pray for this food that we're about to partake. That it be your will and bless it and nourish from our bodies. Please forgive us for we pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.